Farmers stand in silence at auction. So a young man can buy back his family farmhouse. Caring community. This is the kind of sh people did back in the depression. When mortgage halts, would try to sell a farm. Everyone in the community showed up and strong armed any serious bidders away. They had the penny auction tactic, where farmers would bid absurdly small amounts on farm equipment and land, while glaring intensely, until the auctioneer realized they needed to take what they were getting, or get their legs broken. This kind of stuff saved so many farms, they'd buy off 500 plus dollar mortgages, which were huge amounts back then, for less than $100, and give it back to the farm owners. The lesson to take away, is that only direct action and community organizing, can help in such dire times. I was exploring in the catacombs, and found a ladder going up. I climbed it, and found a square door. I pushed open the door, and found myself inside a university lecture room at 3 in the morning. And you chose to censor your face in the worst way imaginable. Disclaimer. My hatred of geologists is purely theatrical, but if I did have to kill one for some reason, it would be very easy. I'd brandish my obsidian knife at them, and they'd be compelled to approach. That's very cool, they'd say, confident in their superior strength and endurance from all the rocks they carry around at all times. They'd shower me with very interesting facts about obsidian and hover just out of range of the cutting edge, waiting for me to exhaust myself. But as it is volcanic glass, it's very fragile, you see, and isn't well suited for use as a weep, and then I'd hit them with the wooden baseball bat in my other hand, which they would not have noticed, because geologists can only see rocks and minerals. Showed my geologist dad a picture of the obsidian knife you had, and he nearly said this exact thing word for word. I can't believe my own father would fall prey to this. Clearly you know thine enemy. I work too closely with geologists not to have a contingency plan for eliminating them. Sent this to my geologist brother. Damn it, where'd you find that? You're gonna get us all killed. I'm coming for him, sooner or later. Residents view the first iceberg of the season as it passes the south shore near Fairyland Newfoundland, Canada, by Jody Martin. It did not occur to me that icebergs just pass by people's houses. Good thing this here internet box exists. Back in the 12th century, or whatever, I would have had to shout my bullsh from the window. Me, hanging out my window in the dead of night, 1127 AD. I have 12 toes and 7 eyes. A guardsman, already aiming for my nuts with his crossbow. Shut you f mouth. I'm in a group message with a bunch of straight guys, and I have no idea what's going on. For example, one of them just shared this meme, which is simply enlightened. The only essential oil I trust is WD-40. Can we just collectively agree as a generation that we aren't going to care if each other's houses are clean when we visit because I'm getting real sick of the the house has to be spotless or our guests will judge us deal my parents got going on. None of us in this generation is going to be able to afford a house. Illness cancelled my little sister made me honey and lemon tea, and if that doesn't cure me, then her sheer endearing belief that it'll work will. Got, Tumblr is a hell site. I spent 5 whole seconds figuring out how the concept of illness could cancel your sister and could not make that fit into the rest of the sentence. I think when illness cancels a person, it's called death. I love cats. Like. We as a species just really go out of our way to obtain fat little house goblins in the hopes that they will occasionally acknowledge us. Reblog if you love your fat little house goblin. Earlier today I was non-verbal for a bit, but no one was around except the cats. So I signed at Molly that she's a good cat and she immediately started purring. This cat knows too much. I live in fear that someday yes, the cat killed OP. Hash, false she merely sat down on the keyboard and hit the post button prematurely. I don't understand shark movies. I mean, just get out of the water. The first thing I thought was, they can't get out of the water. They're sharks. 
I think the best thing about Gen Z is their dedication to self-care. And by this I mean, when John Milani performed at a college and he took a sip of water, the crowd would start applauding and someone yelled at him, hydrate before you dehydrate, therefore confusing an already confused man even more. Deploy the boy. Boy, deployed. The other day I was perusing the dessert options in the dining hall, and this group of absolute stereotypical frat boy types were also milling around the desserts, and one of them pointed to the strawberry pastries, and said to the others, what's the vibe with these, boys, and I haven't been able to get that sentence out of my head since. Same energy. I think one of my lowest lows of the past few years was crawling on my stomach across broken glass under a cabin to drag out a rotting mule deer carcass while crying over a girl and listening to Radiohead on loop. Ship, I will give you my left kidney for the story behind this. There's not really a story. I was cleaning up trash around camp and preparing for the next group of tourists, but there was a dead deer under one of the cabins and no one else wanted to go near it. I volunteered because I wanted to be alone and unobserved while coping with unrequited feelings for a straight girl. Now, your kidney. Hand it over. I want to go on a shopping trip where I'm the only one in the shopping mall and everything I want is free. That's called night robbery. So be it. Business shrimp having business shrimp meeting. Starks. Very important meeting going on here. When I'm a baron, or a count, or a marquis, I'm going to insist that my castle is only accessible via one long, narrow, twisting path that drops off into an abyss on either side. Handrails. No. F you. Like this one. No. That's a rope bridge. They have their place, but not here. This is what I'm talking about. You're gonna regret that when you buy furniture. Fun fact. Most castles like this actually had a special pulley system for pulling furniture up into the castle. Furniture did not come up that disability inaccessible ramp. It came from the bottom of the cliff and was ascended into the heavens by a human powered crane. What about wheelchairs and wheelchair users? The crane option doesn't sound all that safe if I'm honest, and the path obviously isn't. It's not supposed to be safe, it's supposed to be accessible, technically, but dangerous. I don't want any sensible guests visiting my castle at all. Actually, if I install a very low 2 inch barrier on either side of the path, to keep wheelchairs from sliding off, it would become safer to traverse in a wheelchair, than on foot. Very tempting. I support these shenanigans. But consider. How do you get to your estate? When I'm hungry, I fly. When I have recently fed, I'm perfectly round, and I simply roll my wondrously spherical body up and down my horrible castle path. Wait, but what if you have a guest coming, who can also fly? What studying languages is like? Latin. Words like yes and no aren't important. Memorize these 3000 different ways to talk about killing people though, because you will use them. Greek. Hello naughty students, it's participle time. Egyptian. Ancient Pictionary. French. Pronouncing every letter is for chumps. German. Let's combine every other word together to create the ultimate Franken word. Mandarin. Lol. What's a verb tense? Spanish. Lol. What isn't a verb tense? Till. That the your mother insult is found in nearly all cultures and is as old as humanity itself, with examples in Shakespeare and the Bible. Yo mama so old that mankind invented language just to insult her. Okay. I want a superhero story in which the superhero is one of those normal kid gets superpowers through freak accident and goes out and fights crime and of course runs into the super villain at some point and tries to take them down. And the villain, a couple minutes into the fight, realizes they're fighting a literal child and just has an internal freak out about this new development. Because, fine. I've got plans to steal all of the world's largest gems, and I'm generally not a nice person, but holy sh, there's a kid coming at me. This is a kid. I can't with this. So the super villain 
instead of trying to kill or hurt their nemesis, go through all these complicated plans to trap them, or put them to sleep, or stick them in a large tank or something, so they can go ahead with it. Sometimes it works, and the super villain spends a harried half hour lecturing the superhero about maybe going to school and being safe. Instead of doing this, that would be nice. The super villain staying up at night, occasionally wondering if the tiny superhero is out there trying to get themselves killed right this moment. The super villain sending super villain henchman ninjas out to tell the superhero and help out if it ever looks like the superhero is going to get killed. The super villain takes to pacing around and muttering to themselves occasionally about parenting and responsibility and how they never signed up for this sh**. Actually, petitioning their version of the Justice League to have someone step in and do something about this. That kid has to be like 12. And what is everyone thinking? Bonus points. If the kid has no parents and the villain finds this out and spends a night internally screaming about it. Basically, I want a super villain unwittingly becomes the super worried parent of the kid who is actively trying to foil their every plan and topple their evil regime. Nobody will suspect a thing. Krauto bombing. Dude. Like. Dragons are mentioned in almost all cultures all across the world. Even before they had interaction with each other. And you're telling me they didn't exist. Wow. It's almost like some kind of large lizard like creatures roamed the earth at some point. And left fossilized remnants of their bodies behind that ancient cultures. Were trying to make sense of. Hash. You obviously are referring to dragons here. Got so high last night. We searched for my friend for half an hour. While he helped us look. I'm yelling quietly. Why do people like fall? Gravity. No. Wait. I misunderstood. Hash. Too late. An ancient Greek walks into his tailor's shop with a pair of torn pants. Euripides? Says the tailor. Yeah. Humanides? Replies the man. This is so awful. It must go on to infect others. My therapist asked me if I wanted to show her some of the stuff I'm interested in and got a computer for me to show her the websites and I sat there for a second because my anxiety is bad and she was like, not the porn ones, that would be socially unacceptable. I love her. Friendship is spending 10 minutes photoshopping an image of high school musical era Zac Efron with a gun in his hand to threaten your friends with. Can you please post the image you made for every own Zac Efron with a gun needs? Here you go. Dude, get your fucking flashlight out of my face. I can't see sh. I don't care if my eyes are glowing and humans can't do that. Turn off your fucking torch and stop screaming, you idiot. The angel of death. Fists you. And then you die. Context. My teacher translated the verb to grasp with one's hand as to fist. Since that's kinda what it literally means. But you can't translate it like that into English. Because to fist means something entirely different. But she doesn't know that. So she was explaining how they use a verb to describe the angel of death taking your soul. He rips your soul out of you with his fist. Now that's pretty damn metal. But she said word for word. The angel of death fists you. And then you die. Which is the single most terrifying and powerful sentence to ever grace my ears.